welcome to Forecast Lab and happy fall 2021. Yes, the equinox occurred just 30 minutes ago and it is now fall. And with that change to fall, an autumn-like weather system. Let's take a look at that on the surface map. There it is, cold front stretching from South Carolina down to the Gulf and out towards South Texas. Winds in the wake of that cold front, about 10 to 20 knots. And you can see that the temperatures back behind it, not very cold. This is the first major cold front of the fall season. So we're only seeing 70s and 60s. The ground temperature is pretty warm through much of the U.S. Further up to the north in the Great Lakes area, there's another frontal system. Some rain coming down across Cleveland, up to Detroit, and up to Ottawa and Quebec. Out ahead of it, some very warm temperatures. You can see we've got 90 degrees there in South Carolina and some 80s showing up in the Philadelphia area. In the West Coast region, looks like a new Pacific front coming south. Some nice mild weather for that part of the country. And there's the leading edge of that cold front heading into the Great Basin area. There's how the North Pacific is stacking up. Alaska, West Canada, this looks like a definite transition to fall. 20s throughout much of Alaska and snow. I didn't get all those areas right here. There's a little bit of snow. But in northern Yukon, snow coming down. And yeah, there's another area I missed. But anyway, yeah, it is looking a bit wintry. And you can see by the thickness lines right there, that's a pretty large chunk of cold air moving south around clockwise around this high right here. So much of that is coming into Western Canada, the Pacific Northwest. And on the other side, we have warm air advection into the Gulf of Alaska with this next system south of the Aleutians. And there's the other corner of North America, some cold temperatures up in the Hudson Bay region up to the Arctic, 20s and 30s. So we're definitely hanging on to a large chunk of cold air in the northern part of the continent and some cold air advection into Quebec. And that should make its way into the northeast U.S. in the next day or so. Let's check out the major forecast centers. NHC showing Tropical Depression Peter wandering north. We're not too concerned about that. The track is forecast ahead, maybe a little bit east of Bermuda. The next system, Tropical Depression Rose, way out there in the deep Atlantic. No problems with that. So, as we mentioned back on Monday and maybe back on Friday, we've got that Cape Verde system, which is moving towards the Leeward Islands. Look at the five-day track, does show that pretty much heading for that region. There has been a lot of recurvature on much of this activity in the Atlantic. So we'll check out the GFS. And the verdict with this is no major problems. We should have a hurricane out there, maybe around Bermuda. Where's Bermuda? Where's that speck right there? Yeah, I think that's it. Looks like the hurricane is staying east of Bermuda. This, you know, this is 210 hours out, so a lot could change. However, the impacts for the East Coast are not looking to be much of a problem. And just a quick check out in the Eastern Pacific. Sometimes we do get some effects from remnants of storms coming up towards Arizona and New Mexico. No real problems on that two-day outlook. So we'll go over to SPC. And there we do see a slight risk out for Eastern Ohio and Western Pennsylvania around Pittsburgh up towards Erie. And there is a tornado watch out for that region. Storm reports just indicating some wind in eastern Kentucky. And that was earlier this morning. 14Z there. That's a look at the visible satellite loop. We definitely have a strong bear clinic system out in the Midwest. And what you see here also, an area of strong solar heating ahead of the cold front. And also the appearance of transverse bands indicating strong low-level shear. 
That's the Pittsburgh radar we're looking at right now. Severe thunderstorm warnings out ahead of these cells. They do look a little bit convex, indicating some downburst potential. There's a couple more cells there. You can see that convex shape. And when you see that, you always need to be on guard for wind potential, especially at the apex of those bows. Now, this is pretty far from the radar, so we can't really look at velocity. But if these cells were a little bit closer, yeah, we would tune that in and take a look at the ground relative velocities close to the radar. Now, this is up at about four to 5,000 feet. I'm getting that off the bottom right here. When I put that cursor there, the apex is at 5,000 feet, so that is not representative of ground level winds. But once you're closer to that radar, then you can certainly use that data. So anyway, well, it looks like a stormy afternoon for the eastern tier counties of Ohio and western Pennsylvania. A good place to start with a high resolution rapid refresh. Well, you can look at the temperature, certainly. Front, very easy to identify. You can see the air mass where it's been warmed by the sun coming up to the low to mid 80s in northern West Virginia. Then we would want to go to theta E because that gives us the best available parcels. The higher the theta E, the more your lifted parcel sits on the skew T to the right. And that's what you need to really bring out the best capes. And what we see here, kind of a very wide tongue, a very high theta E. So that's what we would be concerned with this afternoon. And we can watch the evolution as that gets pulled northward into this low along Lake Erie. And we can see that the values actually diminish due to mixing of the low-level air. Now, another useful index is you can go to the supercell composite. That puts a lot of your more important parameters together. So we run that forward, and that pretty much identifies that Ohio Pennsylvania border area as being significant this afternoon, and then shifting into the second and third tier counties of Pennsylvania around evening. And you can make out that front right there. These Composite indexes, they are pretty useful for finding boundaries. You can even go to zero through one storm relative helicity right there, and you can make out immediately where that cold front is and some of the stronger outflow pools. Wildfires becoming a bit of a concern in Texas and Oklahoma. This is the Keech Byram drought index, and you can see high values when you get up to 700. That's indicating a pretty significant fire potential. Out in California, it's pretty much maxed out, and we know that they've had wildfire problems for quite a while now. So, with the flow becoming a little bit more northerly and drier, this could be a concern over the next couple of weeks. And let's take a look at that forecast. This shows the cold air advection from the Great Lakes into the Appalachians. So it's going to be kind of a cool night in that part of the country. And there's that Bear Clinic High advecting cold air south on its east side and warm air north on the other side. And we call that a bear clinic high because the thickness lines are running straight through the middle, indicating that it is a focus of temperature advection. In the northern plains, strong lee side troughing in Alberta and Montana due to the active jet stream pattern through that region. And we go forward into tonight and tomorrow. That low pressure system moves on off into the Lake Huron region, the main Bear Clinic zone, outrunning it, heading out towards New York City and Washington, D.C. There's the warm sector, so one more warm night for the northeastern U.S., and then things should cool down. And in the central U.S., cyclogenesis starting up in Colorado with the lee side troughing taking effect there. And of course, we got the next system working its way southward. That's going to be it right there 
lot of the better cold air locked up up near the U.S. Canada border. So no big changes. One little bear clinic high moving into Missouri and Kansas. That's it right there. And then we return to lee side troughing in the northern Rockies. So it's going to be kind of a quiet three or four days. What we see here around Sunday, this is the outgoing high stagnating across the eastern U.S. So kind of hazy and mild, not much weather. The next big change comes up next week. A strong Pacific system coming on shore. Cold air advection into the Great Basin area. And that crosses the Rockies around Wednesday and then Thursday next week. Some chances for rain and storms in the central plains. And we can also see a backdoor front into Texas and the Gulf Coast region. That's cold air advection due to this strong 1028 millibar high. Let me go backwards and see if something snuck into Texas. Nope. It looks like that's just kind of a reinforcement of that cold air that's already present. We see that it kind of coalesces with that high further north in the Great Lakes region and just reinforces a lot of the cool, mild air that's already present over the southeastern U.S. And what we also see is that the wind component, let me go all the way to the beginning, the wind component in the Gulf region is northerly throughout almost the entire period. See that right there? Even Saturday, north to south component, Tuesday, well, a little bit more of a northeast to southwest component, but that's just not really going to bring up a whole lot of deep moisture. Maybe some sneaking up into this region right here, but it is going to remain kind of mild and dry throughout the eastern U.S. next week. Let's see how that works out with the precip precip precipitable water. A lot of drying. You can see that occlusion winding up some of that moisture there in the Great Lakes. A couple of systems moving west to east. The tropical air lurking out there in the Gulf, but it's just not being pulled very far north, even into Texas. Some of it gets going around Wednesday or Thursday next week, makes it to the northern plains, but you can see just how dry the air is in the southeastern U.S. So a lot of these systems up in the Midwest are not going to be working with a whole lot of moisture, maybe one to one and a half inch amounts at best. And we can see at the very end there, a new outbreak of cold air. This looks like a 1036, 1038 millibar high up in Canada. That could be the GFS cold bias, but that does look like another good surge of cold air coming south. That will conclude this evening's edition of Forecast Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll leave you with some footage of sunset in Dallas a few days ago. Enjoy, and we'll see you back here on Friday. Bye-bye.